Hello everybody, Apophy here, and welcome to a little spotlight I'm doing on a labyrinth that I designed. So the labyrinth is a little bit different than traditional labyrinth is, a labyrinth is um, in that it has six different exits. Now, as soon as you start into the labyrinth, only one of those exits will open. Um, so it, it's a randomizing labyrinth, and every time you run it, it should have sort of a different outcome. Um, there's no way to just learn it and run it. You have to every time look through it and maybe find the right exit or maybe not. So I know that depending on who you are and why you're watching this video, you might be really, really interested in some different topics about this labyrinth. Some of you are going to be really interested in the redstone and the mechanics of it. Some of you are just going to be interested in downloading the thing and running it. For you, there is a download link in the description. And the first topic that we're going to talk about is how to just run the machine and, and have fun with it. You can download it and play it with a few of your friends, see who can maybe get a better time or anything like that. Um, so you can go ahead and try it, and then we're going to get into discussing some of the redstone aspects of it and how the machine actually works. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put timestamps in the description and a download link so that you guys can choose if you want to listen to just the, the little rundown or whether you want to actually get into the redstone details of it. So anyways, guys, let's hop into it. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to actually get this thing working. Um, this is just going to be the little tutorial of how to operate the labyrinth. It's not going to be any of the redstone workings or anything like that. It's just how to run it and how to play it. Um, I know for some of the viewers, uh, you're just going to be interested in how that works. And so let's get started. Um, so here we've got our payment. Uh, so this is the two lights to indicate whether or not payment has been received. So you just throw in one diamond and then click on the button. You hear the latch and the payment is now accepted. The course is ready to run. If you were to put something wrong into here, it would immediately be recycled just into this chest and you could pick it back up. Um, so it wouldn't jam anything up like that. But now I can take my time. I can get ready, take a deep breath and run. And as soon as I hit that tripwire, you can hear everything sort of configure and it's going to give me 90 seconds, I believe 90 seconds to try and solve this thing. Um, so basically, uh, as I mentioned before, the whole idea is that there are going to be six exits to this maze, um, only one of which is going to be open at any given time. So let's see if I can find my way out. Um, I'm not much good at this, so I usually can't, believe it or not. Um, when I'm looking through the maze, I usually just end up back and forth, like stumbling over the same exit or two, trying to see where they, um, where else I would go. Uh, there's another one. It's not that though. Let's see this way. Maybe there's something over here. Oh no, that's totally the wrong way. So yeah, like I said, I'm obviously not very good at it. All right, so now you heard all of those latches open. That means that the the time has expired and every exit will open now, and you can just jump down. And now remember to hold space and not shift so you don't take any damage on those slime blocks. So over here is where we have the the payment chest, or sorry, the, um, the reward chest, if you manage to complete it in time. It is a trapped chest, so uh, what happens is if Excuse me. Um, if you are get here and just in the nick of time, you come running over and open the chest, it won't take the items out of it. The uh, the prize will stay in it until you actually take it out. Um, so it won't snag it out from under your nose if you've actually won. So now we're going to show you uh, over here, and we're going to restart it. And this time, I'm just going to head straight down there and uh, get that done. Okay, so again, we've got the courses ready to run light turned on and payment. We'll throw in another diamond and we'll hit the button. It's ready to go and I'm gonna hit this and we're good. So I'm gonna go around the other side and show you what's down there. So assuming I managed to solve the maze and uh, drop down here. All I have to do is just run over to this chest and open it just like that. And then I can take my uh, 
and then I can take my diamonds out. All right, so if you're the person who is running this thing, um, you definitely wanna be making some money on it. So if we come down here, this is actually the chest that would collect money. So every uh, two diamonds that are put into the machine, one of them will drop into this chest, and the other will be added to a prize pot. So if it's been like 10 since the last person won, uh, the person will get a quite a big prize when, when the person wins. Um, but you'll also be making a bunch of money off of it. So that's that anyway, there's quite a circuit dealing with that. And as you can see, the whole machine is quite bulky. Um, I'll show you the inside of it right here. And uh, so it, the, there is an entrance. Ooh, there we go. There is an entrance right here. So if we come inside, we can see that it's, um, it's kind of a mess. There is redstone absolutely everywhere. I have gone through and labeled most of the stuff, um, most of the important parts anyway, so that you can kind of like, you know, keep a keep your head straight while you're looking through all this stuff. All right, so clearly keeping it inside that box has caused the redstone to get pretty cluttered, and I'm not going to try to explain it while looking at all that stuff. What I did is pulled out a bunch of the parts and sort of have a working model here of what it's going to be like. So the first, and, and sort of in my mind, the, the heart of this whole machine is the randomizer. Um, this is a randomizer of my own design. It's not technically a randomizer because uh, it, it doesn't truly select a random thing. Um, what it does is it's just a clock, and that clock is entirely silent and entirely invisible to the player. Um, so by you know creating a clock and then hiding it entirely, people have no way to know which of the six um, the six stages the uh, the redstone circuit is on. So what we've got here is just six hoppers running into each other in a circle and a bed just traveling around inside. It doesn't need to be a bed, it's just what I chose. So what happens is um, when we want to stop this, this piston extends down and pushes these on top of the hoppers. Um, the slime blocks are necessary here because it pushes all six of the redstone blocks onto the hoppers at exactly the same time, uh, giving it like an equal chance for the bed to be in any one of the six and the output to be any one of the six exits. Um, so yeah, these just run out to the exits and control pistons opening or closing them. So we're going to come over to the start here and I'll show you some of the original, like the, the starting mechanics. Um, so there is a payment thing. This is what the payment would be. And this is the recycle. Um, here, this just goes into an item sorter. Uh, only diamonds can get through, otherwise stuff goes out this way. I haven't built the whole item sorter here, but you guys can uh, can find out how to build an item sorter. They're pretty simple. Um, so once the item is sorted and a, a diamond is detected, it creates an output. The output goes to here to unlock uh, this thing and allow you to start the course. Um, with this model, it is unlocked all the time. So as soon as I step on the pressure plate, we can see some changes. This pushes out, and what this does is effectively locks the circuit. So I can jump up and down all I like on this tripwire, and it doesn't affect anything. That was really important, just so that people couldn't uh, be tampering with the circuit and stuff after the course has started. So there's that. that. Um, and now the circuit is actually recharging itself, so we'll wait a second. Um, but what, what'll happen is it'll go through this T flip-flop as soon as I press it. Um, so this is a T flip flop. Essentially, it changes a button press, or in this case, a tripwire press, into a lever output. Um, so as soon as I hit this, it'll turn the output on, and it will stay on until it gets another input here. So we can see here that the blocks are pushed down. One output is selected, and there is a timer here that starts counting down. I've got it set quite low just so that uh, for, for demonstration purposes. Um, so what this clock will do is count down however many items that you have in here. Uh, this is how you control how much time it takes to run the labyrinth. Um, by adding or taking away, you can select. So if I do this, I'll cut the time in half. Um, you can select how much time it actually takes and how much you have to run the course. So you'll see this will retract quite quickly. So it's not very much, not anywhere near enough to actually run. So that's that. Now for the payment, what happens is this uh, output comes this way and it actually cycles. There's a clock here running all the time. It actually makes a nice ticker. Um, 
so inside the chest we have a diamond block in this case and as soon as it goes the diamond block is taken out of the chest the diamond block actually comes back here and stays in this until this clock is turned back on um, at which point the dropper will force it up into the hopper and it will travel across into the payment chest so that's just about it for the uh the redstone mechanics it's not too complicated but it does get a little bit messy when you do it on this sort of scale Alrighty, guys thank you so much for watching i really really appreciate it if you like the video go ahead and leave a like on it it helps me out a lot and if you have any ideas or if you saw anything that kind of made you scratch your head go ahead and ask about it or if you're a redstone guru and you've seen something that kind of seems a little strange maybe i could have done something a little bit better or i could have done something a little bit differently let me know down in the comment section i would really really appreciate it this is sort of a 1.0 build like a like a functional prototype almost so i would love to hear any comments that you guys have um, so again thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time